I never get tired of saying this. The Super Nintendo is my favorite video game system of all time. It has the best library, the greatest controller, amazing sound. Overall, I have had more fun with the Super Nintendo than any other video game system. That's even including the NES. Hey everybody, Gary here from Rocksaw Productions. I hope you are doing well here today. So what we have going on with the Super NES, and you can see I have this one here, so playing behind me, what's going on? This is Super Adventure Island playing behind me in the back. What I want to know, were you a fan of the Adventure Island series? And if so, did it go just to the NES or did you follow it on to the Super NES, onto the Genesis? I believe there was a version on the Genesis, TurboGrafx-16. Were you a fan of the Adventure Island series of games? So fan of the channel, Meng, sent me an email recently. He said, hey, I just picked up a Super NES Junior, ta-da, off of eBay and wanted to know if you could install one of Voltar's RGB mods for it. And sure, I can go ahead and take care of this for you. This is one of those things where it is easily the best upgrade that you could do to your Super Nintendo, and it looks fantastic. It looks so much better than like those AV to HDMI adapters or even the cables that are out there too. When you go through and get that RGB output reinstalled back into this, which just gives you a super crisp in image. That's what I've got going on here. So this is actually going through HD Retrovision cables and my RetroTank 2X Pro. So what we're going to do, we're going to crack it open and we're going to go ahead and we're going to install Voltar's RGB mod. Let's get started. So here we have Meng's system on our table. And one thing we want to do before we do any sort of mod work, power it up, test it out, make sure it's working right out of the box. That way you're not doing a mod on a system that's dead and no matter what, it's not going to work. Power it up, test it, does work using the standard AV cables. So to get inside of a Super Nintendo Junior, there's one, two, three, four screws and that uses a 4.5 millimeter security bit and I got to make sure I grab the right one. Nope, grab the smaller one. And what I'm going to use is I have a Hitachi power screwdriver. I've used this for my RC stuff for years and years and years. Just makes this sort of thing go a whole lot faster. Set those screws right there. We'll be able to pop that right off. Overall, not too dirty. A little bit of fuzz floating around in there. Uh, next, what we need to do, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws that we need to remove the system. And for that, that's just a standard Phillips blade screwdriver. One of the things I like about this mat is the fact that it does have these little holes so I can kind of set the screws where they need to go and then grab them back and put them in the right spot on the way back as I reassemble the system. Now this guy tends to be a pain, uh, so what I'm going to actually do, I have an extension here uh, and that just makes it easier for me to get around that. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Yep, overall the bottom of the shell, not too dirty. Flip that over, there we have all of our screws and this little RF shield just lifts right out. Um, nothing that we're going to be really doing anything with one way or the other. So basically the area where we're gonna be working around, let's bring in a little bit closer. So looking at the board itself, what we're gonna be working on is this section here, and then we're gonna be working with these points here, and these are called vias. And the wonderful thing about Voltar's kit is it is very, very well designed. He's done a couple of revisions, and it basically just fits over those pins here. We'll tack them down in a second, and we'll solder from these points to those points down below using the wire that uh, uh, we have included with this kit. Now, while not as necessary as in the past, I'm gonna come in here with my flush cuts and just snip off the legs of those bits there. I drop my side cuts. And the board just gets laid down just like this. Now, I'm gonna actually do a glasses change. I actually have a set of glasses specifically for soldering and working on equipment such as this so I can see a little bit more easily. So I'm going to put some no clean solder flux on here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack it down on a couple different spots before we solder everything into place. There we go. Now I can come through these three points on this side. There's actually no contact there whatsoever. So basically I just need to do the top row, uh, the rest over this way, and then the left uh, to right here on the bottom row.
perfect. And just like that, we are soldered to the board. That's what I love about this thing, is the fact that the installation is so, so simple. Um, and you can see too, all these points are pretty shiny, although I'm gonna hit that one on the top row, my, basically this guy here on the corner, just a little bit more. There we go. Look how beautiful that looks. And again, thanks to Voltar for everything that he does on here to make sure that people like me can install this stuff. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder from these points here to these points here. So you basically go, you know, one, two, three, that is B, G, R, and then down below, uh, let me point to it here. So you have B, G, R, and then your sink, B, G, R, and your sink. Now, this is about the most frustrating part of this whole deal for me. Working with very fine wires and everything can be a little bit frustrating. So the first thing that I like to do is separate our conductors just so that way I have them the right separation here so that I can work with them as I need. Now some people will strip the wires first and then separate them. I prefer to separate them and then strip them. Because you do have to keep them separated. And there we go, we have our conductors nice and stripped clean. Give you a closer look. See how nice and cleanly stripped those are. So what I have here is just some solder flux paste and I'm just going to dunk the leads in here. And now I'm going to tin these wires. And basically tinning is the process of applying a small amount of solder to the end of the wires so that they are ready to be adhered to their final destination. And we're just gonna come in, we're gonna tin our iron first. Doesn't take much, just a little bit, boop. Now we flip it around, do the other side, exact same thing. Same thing, we're gonna just dunk it in some flux. Now these, these are stripped a little bit more than they need to be, so once I get them tinned, uh, we're gonna trim these down a little bit. Now this is the biggest pain in this entire process for me, and that is getting these wires in those vias. And there we go, awesome. And I will tell you one of the things that made this mod so much easier for me is this soldering iron, um, which is blurry right now, but we'll show you here in a second. Put some no clean solder flux. We're gonna tack these guys down. Actually, before I do that, Come in, I'm gonna hold those down there. So again, yeah, just real quick with some no clean. And I hit these three and then I do the composite sink separate. Iron. There we go, that's what I was looking for. So I'm gonna give you a closer look here. So there you can see kind of how those are now all shiny and tacked down and in place. Now we're gonna get our composite sink in there. And now we need to get our purple wire in place and there he pretty much drops right in there. And now we're gonna introduce a little bit more no clean solder flux, clean tip on our iron. And introduce a little bit of solder here as we, and there we go. And now these will conveniently just drop right into place right here. Uh, so first things first is we are going to go ahead and we are going to tin the board here. And that basically is just to prepare it for soldering again. And what I like to do is I like to just scuff this up a little bit. If you have like some emery cloth or fiberglass pen that also works, all that we're doing is we are providing a good solid spot for the solder to adhere to. Okay, that's all it is with that. There you can see nice shiny solder blobbies. I'm just gonna reposition it here so it's a little bit easier for me to do. Left to right, top to bottom, side to side, tell me no lies. Really disappointed people didn't pick up in a recent video that I was quoting ACDC on that. Oh well. There's our first wire down. You just go right across. Now, 
Some people can go ahead and trim this down, kind of eliminate the excess wire. I don't worry about it too much. You're not gonna get signal loss or degradation or, or too much resistance coming through your circuit doing this. Uh, you can if you wanted to. Um, I generally use what is provided. That way too, if anything happens later on down the road, it gives me some wiggle room to make corrections. Okay, a little bit too high. There we go with that. There we go with that. The last thing we need to do is this C11 capacitor needs to be replaced. And that is what is in that little foam packet right there. And uh, basically what this does is it addresses some ghosting issues and whatnot that the Super NES Junior can have. Um, now these capacitors are not polarized, so there's no positive, no negative to worry about. And removal is pretty stinking easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our iron tinned here, grab some solder and come in there's c11 just like that it's off and where is it it is on our tip and now it is on the tip of our knife very simple to do um, now this is one of those where uh, next to getting the wires in the vias this is the biggest pain just because it likes to stick to the iron itself. So we are going to uh, do our best to try to not make that happen. Now we're gonna try our tweezers and see if we can hold it into place. I'm sorry if you see my head in the action. Oop. All right, and that side is down. I know this is kinda hard to see on camera. I apologize for that. We've got good contact there. So the last final step that we need to do here is we need to clean up our work, clean up our board and everything. And for that, you can use some isopropyl alcohol, it tends to work really well. You can use electronic contact cleaner. Um, I use um, isopropyl alcohol that tends to work really, really well. And I tend to always pretty much have it laying around here. So what I'm going to do, just spray some right on the boards. And I've just got a brush here, brush it off. And I mean, if you really wanted to, you can hit this with some compressed air too, just to, to get the gunk out. I'm not too worried about it. All right, so ready for reassembly. And the first thing that I always forget to do is I always forget to put this stupid RF shield back on. So I'm gonna make sure that I do it first. Bam, it's on. Got everything lined up here looking good. I like to do these side ones first. Now during reassembly, I set the clutch on my Hitachi very loose because I don't want to strip out these holes. The other thing I do, back the screw out slightly first and then start drilling them in. What that does is it helps the screw seat back in the boss properly and that way you're not cutting new threads. We've got one last one to do, that guy back there. Back it out, get it back in. Now, these screws are not tightened down all the way right now, and that's fine, because what I like to do is tighten them down and finish them down by hand. Again, I don't want to have these screw holes stripped. So really only one of them that needed to be tightened down the rest of the way. Last thing we need to do is put the case top back on. Now, when you are doing this, make sure the switch is in the down position there and your switch on the lid is also in the down position. Otherwise, you won't be able to turn the system on and off. And you'll be like, what gives? And again, this is our four and a half millimeter um, security bit here. Just starting these off by hand. Again, the whole idea here is not to strip out any of the existing plastic bosses. That's actually one of the things I like about this uh, Hitachi as well as I can actually lock it in place and just use it as a handheld screwdriver too. One last screw and we will be through for you. Here we go. There is one RGB modded Super NES Junior. Let's test it out.
So there you have it. We have Meng system completely modded and everything for you. Now this is still mine playing behind me. What I'm gonna do, I am going to turn it off, unplug it here, no edits or anything like that. Put that same copy of Super Adventure Island in and plug in the power, plug in the HD Retrovision component video cable and it should pop up here with our title screen just like that. Beautiful looking results, super easy to do. It's one of those that if you have a Super NES Junior, you really need to do this mod. It is very easy and the quality and the results that you get out of it are, are really quite terrific. And now I'm using HD Retrovision cables here. You can also use Insurrection Industry SCART cables and then use something like a uh, RetroTank to SCART adapter. This is right now going through my RetroTank 2X. Another successful mod done here off of the bench. Now, if this is something that you are interested in doing, you can always feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also go ahead and email me at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Send me a message on Twitter at Rocksolid Studios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions and Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions. GK. Now, if you do want to pick up additional parts and accessories for your system, do me a favor, head on over to CastlemaniaGames.com. The great thing over there is he has a feature called Castle Cash. It's his rewards program where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases. And he has been getting in the HD Retrovision Super NES and N64 style um, component video cables again. And he does carry the SCART cables from Insurrection Industries. Now, if you are looking for any other information as far as like other uh, mods that we've done, tips, tricks, and tutorials, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to support the future of Rocksaw Productions, you can do so by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you'll get early access to all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. You can also become a channel member here on YouTube for as little as $1.99 a month. And with that, you get a badge next to your name when you comment or post on the channel, and you are acknowledged whether you are a channel member or a Patreon supporter at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also support the channel by visiting our Teespring store on screen now, where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, masks, cell phone cases, and much more. Again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.